Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Putnam County Sheriff Gator DeLoach. To my immediate left is Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Rick Surrency. I will allow him to make a few brief remarks followed by a, a statement from me regarding a drastic change in the way that we address school safety and security. Dr. Surrency. Thank you and uh, Gator, thanks for coming and inviting us here today. Uh, behind us, by the way, we have members of our staff, uh, school board, school board members and uh, district level leadership staff, as well as uh, staff from the sheriff's office. Uh, thank you all for coming and I have some brief remarks to say and then we'll have time, like Gator said, a few minutes after that to entertain some questions. As the superintendent of the Putnam County School District, it is my solemn duty to protect approximately 11,000 students and 1,600 employees whom I serve. After the tragic event in Parkland, Florida, our district staff and principals gathered to review our safety and security procedures to ensure that all steps were being taken to address any possible event in our district. The citizens of our district, like many around the nation, are frightened about what seems to be a new normal in our schools today. Students and staff going to school like any other day, yet not returning home due to the actions of another. After meeting with Sheriff DeLoach, he and I discussed how the school district and sheriff's office could team together to protect our schools. Our two agencies partnered to give a financial reward to an individual citizen who provided information that led to the arrest of a person making threats to one of our schools this past week. The sheriff and I also discussed the idea of having armed school personnel in our schools. After extensive discussions, I had decided to look into the possibility of arming certain school personnel as special deputies. The plan discussed by the sheriff and myself would involve selecting specific individuals who work in the schools who would be willing to go through extensive training, psychological screening, and background checks to become special deputies. Their weapons would also be concealed to students and fellow staff members. These individuals that only participate as volunteers and their status as special deputies would only be known to the sheriff and myself. These individuals would only act as, special, as a special deputy in the event of an actual school shooting. I have consulted with my district leadership team, individual school board members, and our board attorney to discuss the implementation of such a plan. Our goal is to provide as many layers of protection for our students and our staff as possible. We recognize there is no one solution in resolving the issue of school shootings. We have considered the possibility of providing an additional deterrent to someone considering an act of armed aggression in our school. In the event of an actual live shooter in a school, the possibility of additional armed personnel to engage a shooter would be vital. In the coming days, Sheriff DeLoach and myself will continue to have discussions about deputizing certain school personnel. As the superintendent, it is my intent to act in full cooperation with our district school board and to follow applicable board policy, state and federal laws, and the advice of legal counsel to implement this plan. I appreciate the input of all of our stakeholders and we will continue to find ways to better protect the students and staff of Putnam County. Thank you very much. Sheriff. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. <laughs> Let me say before I begin with my remarks that I'm personally angered that we're here having this conversation today. However, as Dr. Sorensen alluded to, the Sheriff's Office and the Putnam County School District are in the final stages of implementing a plan to provide comprehensive firearms training to certain members of school district faculty and staff and allow those specially selected employees to carry firearms on school campuses. Our primary focus has always been and always will be identifying students or other individuals that pose a serious threat to our schools, but in addition to all of those prevention programs in place throughout the district, we must have sufficient mechanisms in place to protect our children should a killer gain access to one of our schools. We know that if, if an attacker enters a school, we have only a few, a few select minutes to stop the threat. 
highly qualified and well-trained special, de special deputy sheriffs can successfully augment our youth resource deputies and will save lives should the unthinkable happen. According to a United States Department of Justice study, between the years of 2000 and 2013, there were over 160 active shooter incidents in the United States. Active shooter is defined as an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area with a firearm. And I do want to note that these are not school shootings. These, this, uh, this number, this 160 figure, actually encompasses uh, all acts of violence or active shooter incidents throughout the United States between that specified time period. A few key takeaways of this DOJ study include that there were 6.4 incidents per year on average between 2000 and 2006. There were 16.4 incidents per year on average between the year 2007 and 2013. I think that's alarming that we're trending in that direction. 70% of those 160 incidents occurred either in a commerce or business or educational setting, 39 of which were in an educational environment. The reality of it is 107 of these incidents ended before police arrived to engage the shooter. In 25 of the 107 incidents, the shooters fled before law enforcement arrived. 64 of the 160 incidents where an accurate timeline could be established were over in five minutes or less. Incidents at educational facilities account for some of the higher incident casualty counts to include during this time period uh, the study was reported, 32 killed and 17 wounded at Virginia Tech and Sandy Hook Elementary School where 26 were killed and two wounded. The Putnam County Sheriff's Office, in cooperation with the Putnam County School District, is establishing the Sheriff's STAR, which stands for Sheriff's Trained Armed Response Program, to enhance the safety of our students and our faculty. The Sheriff's STAR program is an innovative, rarely seen program that will provide comprehensive and professional law enforcement training to select Putnam County School District faculty and staff members that will enable them to carry a concealed firearm for the purpose of rapidly responding to an active assailant on campus to stop a potential deadly threat. An active assailant, again, is defined as an individual that is armed and actively engaged in the killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area. Studies show, again, that the majority of these killings take place in less than five minutes. In school where no law enforcement officer is on campus, the killing is over before the first officer arrives. The components of this program include that faculty and staff who are specially selected for the program will be screened by PCSO staff, which will include criminal background checks, drug testing, interviews, and a psychological evalu evaluation. These faculty and staff members selected for the program will be volunteers. These program participants will be appointed by the sheriff as volunteer special deputies for the limited purpose of providing security on Putnam County School District properties during an active assailant incident when an armed assailant is posing an immediate threat to people on the premises of these school campuses and facilities. So you might ask why special deputies? And the answer lies in to take advantage of the PC, uh, Putnam County Sheriff's Office professional training and to provide a legal mechanism for staff and faculty to carry a concealed firearm pursuant to Florida statutes. The special deputy sheriff shall have no authority to act on a law enforcement capacity outside of a deadly threat incident on campus and shall have no authority in a law enforcement capacity off campus anyway with the exception of if they are in active pursuit of an armed assailant who has committed an attack on our students. Special deputy sheriffs in the program are authorized to carry concealed, approved firearms on campus. The firearms will, will be specially purchased and issued for the sole purpose of the program. Only PCSO approved concealed carry safety holsters and firearms will be used in this program. 
Special Deputy Sheriffs in the program will be required to successfully complete training with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office training section prior to his or her appointment as a Special Deputy Sheriff. This training, which what I'll get into later, will be rigorous and will consist of well over 100 hours of comprehensive firearm safety and proficiency training. Just some more key points about the program. The firearm safety training model that we have selected is based on the State of Florida Criminal Justice Standards and Training Commission Law Enforcement Academy training model. A typical academy student will fire approximately 100 rounds or more during the academy. These individuals will also be required to go through discretionary shooting exercises using state-of-the-art simunitions and scenario-based training methods. They will also be trained in the apprehension of active shooters and assailants, defensive tactics, a legal component, and all training will be conducted by Criminal Justice Safety and Standards Commission approved and certified instructors. In addition, ongoing and annual proficiency retraining will be conducted by the PCSO training staff. Program participants will be required to pass the firearms training at an 80% pass rate, which is the same standard required for regular deputy sheriffs, or all of these men and women in green behind me. Participants in this program may be denied or terminated by the Putnam County Sheriff's Office for any reason, including, but not limited to, having an arrest or filing of criminal charges against them by the participant or the law enforcement agency, having been served as the respondent of an injunction for protection, having been involuntary placed in a treatment facility for a mental health evaluation under the Florida Baker Act statute, a serious violation of PCSO general orders, or a serious violation of the Putnam County School District policies. Additionally, the Putnam County Sheriff's Office will maintain documentation of the weapon and equipment inspections, as well as the participants' training, certification, inspection, and qualification records. Participants will be required to be clearly identified for the benefit of responding law enforcement officers, faculty, staff, and students in the case of any active shooter or armed attacker incident on one of our school campuses. Program awareness training will be conducted for all school district and sheriff's office staff members as well. Participants will be required to execute a voluntary agreement with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office outlining their duties responsibilities and limitations. The cost of this program will be initially funded by the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. In closing, let me be clear. I fully support the governor's plan and proposed legislation on school safety, but unfortunately, we don't have time to wait on Tallahassee or Washington to keep our students safe. Make no mistake about it. If you attack our schools, it will be the last thing you will ever do. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Sorensen and I are uh, willing and ready to uh, take a few questions if any of you have uh, questions pertaining to this program. Those are uh, details that we will never release because these individuals will actually function in an undercover capacity. So certainly we, uh, we wouldn't want to identify who they are. I'm sorry, this, this young lady right here had her hand up. There is some proposed legislation that addresses that. Uh, my personal belief is that it's irresponsible of us to put guns in the hands of every teacher because at the end of the day, we've got to realize that they have a responsibility to protect those students in their classrooms. So the last thing we want to do is for them to leave their students unattended and then pursue an active assailant on a school campus. Yes, ma'am. Right? So what's your, how 
I don't want to get into the specifics of the program uh, as far as that mechanism is concerned, but we have identified and already placed into a working model of the policy a mechanism by which to easily and readily identify these individuals as special deputy sheriffs so that there is no uh, blue on blue fire, so to speak. This program is actually closely modeled after a program from down in Polk County that Sheriff Judd actually initiated. The distinction between this program and Sheriff Judd's program is that uh, his program was initially rolled out on college campuses. Dr. Sorensi and I immediately following, following the incident down in South Florida began to uh, have conversations about this program though. I don't think we have a gun problem. I think we have a people problem here. And we've got to work to ensure that those who have mental incapacities should not have a firearm. Have teachers, parents, and even students been consulted about this? I'll defer to Dr. Cernsey for that question. Uh, I've, I've talked to staff, and we plan on, uh, through some of my venues, I have an advisory council, and we'll have an opportunity to share this with uh, all of our stakeholders and get input on that as well. So to be clear, they haven't been told? Not, not now, no. No, we have not released any of the details of this program. I can tell you that there is certainly an appetite for this here in Putnam County locally. I've talked to innumerable parents over the last several weeks who have expressed interest in a program just like this. So what would you say that the response has been positive so far, right? I would say that it's been overwhelmingly positive. Now, of course, we haven't released any of the details of this program, but I have had a, a multitude of people calling me asking us to implement a program similar to this. Question in the back. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely not. There is an exclusion in the statute that allows me to appoint special deputy sheriffs to serve in this capacity. Uh, so that particular portion of the statute actually carves out an exemption for these special deputies. And the second part of my question is, we did have a lot of people online saying, I don't want to be armed, but I don't want to have to have a gun on campus. I just want my textbook, so on and so forth. Um, what do you think is the value of those that might have concerns about these programs? How do you think I can accept them at the well, again, it's voluntary. I mean, no one, we would never. The, uh, exactly. Just like the superintendent said, this is a voluntary program, and we're working and doing everything we can to actively ensure that our students and faculty are safe. And just to piggyback off of that question, if you gain no volunteers, then what would happen? We have already identified a group of volunteers that we believe will be interested in the program and just uh, informally polled them. Um, so we already have a group identified. Um, the volunteers, when they're going through their uh, training, testing, and uh, further ranking, are they getting compensated by the school board? Are they being paid for? I know they're volunteering to carry the gun, but when they're going through the training, the classes and all this other kind of stuff, are they, are they, are they still being paid while they're doing that? Uh, yeah, that would, be, that would be during school board time, right. The initial startup cost of the program will be funded by the sheriff's office with in-kind contributions from the school district, of course, in the way of uh, funding these individuals or paying them while they're undergoing this training. I can tell you we've estimated our initial financial responsibility at under $70,000 to implement this program throughout the district. And just as a follow-up to that question, uh, we've also ran some initial figures and for us to hire the uh, required number of youth resource deputies to cover every school campus that we have would be an initial uh, capital outlay of about $1.4 million.
really, I, I don't want to get into the specifics of numbers at schools um, because ultimately we don't want uh, we don't want to we don't want to give any information that might potentially identify how many we have on every campus. But I think that it's reasonable to say that. Uh, there may be any number of um, armed special deputies on school campuses, whether it be one or 100. Absolutely, we are prepared to stand alone. And I hope that other counties will follow suit and develop such a program. Yeah, we serve the, we serve the people of Putnam County, so whatever happens outside of Putnam County, is, we have no control, but we definitely are concerned about our citizenry here in Putnam County. Yeah. Excuse me if you've already stated this, but how long do you think it will take to get started legally? Again, I don't want to release the exact rollout of the date um, or date of uh, implementation. Um, that that's uh, uncertain, but it's it's forthcoming very soon in the future. Yes, ma'am. Doctor, sorry. Well, we can't again. We can't talk about the timeline, but we definitely um, will be taking public input. Uh, people, we have a school board meeting next week. Be more than happy to uh, take input. Seven o'clock Tuesday. Uh, we also have I have an advisory council that I meet with uh, the next month, and we'll be talking with them as well. But if you would like to come and, and voice your concern at our board meeting, you're more than happy to do that. All Putnam County school campuses. Mm -hmm. but this will be a district-wide initiative. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Just one, one second, Colonel. In fairness to the audience members, do any of the audience members other than media have any additional questions regarding this program? How yes, ma'am. Uh, plan on handling charter schools? Are they going to be included in this? Or have on a voluntary basis, if they would like to participate in the program, uh, we'll certainly have a conversation with them about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Thank have you a wonderful afternoon. Much.